Hey everyone, for this edition of Tio Meli Talk, I got to speak with Alessandro Hojabarpur, defensive midfielder currently playing for Pacific FC of the Canadian Premier League. Hope you enjoy the interview. And today's guest is a defensive midfielder currently playing for Pacific FC in the newly formed Canadian Premier League. Our guest is Alessandro Hojabarpur. Alessandro, welcome to Tio Meli Talk. It's good to have you on the show, man. Hi, thanks for having me. You know, the Canadian Premier League is a, is, a, is a obviously a very new league. So, you know, and you currently are playing for Pacific FC. And what can you tell me about the, you know, Pacific FC supporters, you know, and how your experience has been so far in the Canadian Premier League? Uh, so, yeah, the Canadian Premier League is obviously brand new, as you know. Um, it's kind of focused around Canadians and trying to get the most talent, talented players to get to the highest level. If we're talking just Pacific fans, I mean, probably, in my opinion, the best fans in the league we have. You know, we have an advantage that the stadium is kind of like a tight stadium. So fans are really on top of the game, you know, kind of like an English Premier League game atmosphere. So, yeah, I would say the fans, the people in Victoria specifically are very invested. This is like their only professional sports team. So a lot of the people are very invested in this team. So it makes it great for us to play games in front of them. Do you like the direction so far that the Canadian Premier League is going in? Yeah, I would say I do. I think this is exactly what Canada kind of needed. I mean, we're one of the only teams or countries in the entire world that didn't have their own, you know, professional league. We have the MLS, which has some Canadian teams, but we didn't have our own, you know, league that can really kind of forced through Canadian young players, not only young, but Canadian players that haven't really gotten the chance at other levels or other other countries, you know. There's more of a focus on Canadian players and wanting to grow the game here, as there should be. Yeah, I'm definitely a big fan of that. And, you know, I, I like your mindset and what you just said. And, you know, and, you know, of course, you know, this kind of statement gets repeated more than once. Like we said, you know, Canadian Premier League is pretty new. And one thing in talking about football is that there's all, you know, we always like to talk about derbies and rivalries. So in this uh, period of time that the Canadian Premier League, that the Canadian Premier League has been going on, has Pacific FC developed any kind of rivalry with any team so far? Uh, I wouldn't say rivalry. You know, there's a lot of, we're kind of isolated from a lot of teams. I mean, there are certain games that maybe you look forward to playing against the top teams in the league. Um, but the way the league is structured, it's kind of every game really matters. There's only eight teams now. Last year, the first year, there was only seven. So every game can kind of be anyone's game. You know, it's very a close-knit game, whether you're playing first versus last or two teams third and fourth place. Any, any, any points you can get from games are big points. So I think... What I'm trying to say is, you know, each game is kind of like you got to put everything on the line, knowing that it's it's going to be a tough game. It's not going to be a team where you're going to walk over them. I asked you about hockey. You know, of course, when you think of Canada, everyone thinks of hockey right away. You know, not a shock. But I remember you told me you you never really were growing up as like a big time hockey fan. So like, was there a time? Would you say that you grew up being a fan of the Vancouver Whitecaps? Oh, uh, yeah, there was a time in my, my career when I was younger that I played for their youth system, played for the Whitecaps youth system, when it was kind of, you know, it was kind of similar to what this is right now, where it was starting to get big, starting to be like a real force in the youth systems. And so I was lucky enough to grow up and play there in my hometown, obviously. And the Whitecaps had just moved into uh, BC Place, which is a big thing, you know, having a big stadium housing many uh, people each game. But, yeah, I think going back to what you said, hockey, you know, hockey is a big sport in Vancouver. Obviously, we have the Canucks. But I think the the soccer culture is starting to grow there, especially with the Whitecaps. And who knows, in 15, 20 years, might be bigger than hockey in Canada. You never know. All right, now I want to go back, a, go back in time a little bit, you know, in, about your career. I see that you played... Uh, overseas in Bulgaria for Lokomotiv Plovdiv at the U19 level. I mean, what can you say, you know, what was it like playing in Bulgaria 
you know, in that, you know, in the league you were playing in. And what can you tell what can you tell us about the competition that you that you got to experience? And, you know, did it have a huge impact on improving your game? So I'd say my move there was not predetermined, but I always had the goal of wanting to uh, move to Europe to play. And I kind of got the opportunity, luckily, somewhat, you know, I was there just for, you know, some games with a team and someone saw me and asked me if I could stay. So the team was in the U19 level, which is in that in that country is a very high level. You know, they have player uh, teams that are actually currently in like the youth champions league. So the top team of that league will play against Chelsea's, the the Liverpool's, the top, top youth teams uh, around Europe. I'd say the competition is very, very high. You know, a lot of these players, like, that's all they really have. You know, their their careers, their lives are based around, okay, I got to make it in this sport. So you learn a lot of things compared to here, where here maybe you get fed a little more, you know. You get things given to you, you know. There it's like, it's a fight for everything that there is, you know. So what was this like, though, for, you know, for your family? Was this something that was hard for them to see you be so far away when you were, you know, when you were pretty young? But were they also, were they more so excited for your opportunity? Um, so my parents knew that this was always my goal throughout my entire life playing soccer, that I wanted to go to Europe. So obviously it came quite early, 17, you don't expect to go overseas as a Canadian anyway. But no, they were really supportive, both my mom and dad, you know, did everything they could to make it a comfortable transition over there you know they say like the first couple months you get used to it but for me it was maybe after two three weeks I was already you know okay kind of figuring out my routine things that I liked you know things like that how to live alone you know you learn a lot from just living on your own I've told many people if they ever have the chance to live abroad or live alone you you learn so many things that you wouldn't learn uh, living with family until, I don't know, 2021 20, or when you leave for college. It's a big, big difference, but one of the most valuable experiences I've had in my life, for sure. Another thing, you know, about your past, you know, so who was your favorite player growing up? So I'm half Italian, and the story that I tell myself or that I remember is that I really started investing and in watching soccer in 2006, as you know, Italy won the World Cup in 2006, and a lot of my family, you know, we would watch every game together. And my name is Alessandro, and Alessandro Del Piero was playing at the time for Italy. So watching the tournament, seeing him play, you know, resignating with the same name type of thing, uh, he kind of made me, he was my idol and person who kind of made me fall in love with the game even more than I had. So I became a Juventus fan since that moment, or since watching him that World Cup. Obviously, seeing Italy actually win it, you know, you follow them through the whole tournament and they end up winning it just makes your passion for it grow even more. But yeah, I'd say he was the one who, first of all, made me like the national team, Juventus, and just soccer in general as a whole. Whenever someone meets you, you know, you tell them your full name, you know, you know, Alessandro Hojabarapur, you know, very quickly... A lot of a lot of people could say, okay, you sound like you're half Italian, half Iranian. So growing up, I mean, what was this like? You know, how did your what kind of influence did your parents have on you? Like, was did you like in, in one room was it your dad, you know, going crazy cheering for Tio Meli, the national team of Iran, and then like a and another TV is your mom just you know getting getting all crazy, you know, getting all psyched up over the Azzurri, you know, cheering for Italy. So it's a little different. My dad is a big big fan of the Iranian national team. I can remember countless moments because of the time difference him waking up at three four in the morning to watch games but when my dad left Iran he stayed in a house that was uh, Italian so when he came to Canada he was with Italian so he kind of left his family and was on his own and his entire life he actually grew up around Italians so in the World Cup, my dad is also a fan of Italy obviously Iran as well it's where he's born but the culture that I grew up around was more towards Italians because that was where my family was. You know, my mom's family is all in Canada, pretty much. Obviously, some are in Italy, but majority of them are in Canada. Therefore, I grew up a lot around the Italian culture. You know, when talking about your Iranian side of the family, I mean, where is your dad? Where is your dad from in Iran? And and have you been to Iran before for like a, you know, a visit or small vacation? 
Uh, I haven't been there. My dad is from Tehran. Uh, he moved when he was 12, 13 years old. Um, but a lot of the fam- my, my dad's family is actually in the U.S. in Sacramento. So uh, I have, I've been there one time. My family's been there a couple of times, obviously, because of soccer. I couldn't travel with them. But they've been there. So a lot of them are in California, in Sacramento. And, and yeah, so the cultural influence maybe for me was more food. You know, obviously the Iranian food is some of the best food I've ever had in my life. Um, soccer, obviously a little bit. I grew up around my dad, who was obviously a big soccer fan. But besides that, I haven't really, you know, I've never been to Iran. And I've never really met um, the outside of my dad's family. So it's kind of tough, you know. You've had, you know, a lot of the influence of your of your mom's of your mom's family, you know, living in Canada and whatnot. But I mean, but eventually, would you would you entertain the idea of getting to visit Iran? Oh, for sure. Any day that any day, any summer or any break that I have, and we planned a trip for sure, I would entertain the the chance to go there or the chance to go. You know, there is actually a big Iranian population in Vancouver as well. So I we often go for dinner in these parts. So North Vancouver is where there's a lot of people. Uh, but for sure, playing in Iran would be crazy too. The fans in the stadiums I've seen before are packed. They're absolutely full. The atmosphere is great. So you never know one day. You never know where life takes you, really. And, you know, earlier you mentioned that you're a Juventus fan. I mean, I can't be surprised that this one of the that, that you that you beat me to that question because you know whenever we're talking about you know football and talking about favorite teams, you know Juventus is such a such a big name, not just in Italian football but just football in Europe in general. Um, but if you were forced to choose, I mean, let's just say if someone asks you, uh, you know, what's your favorite club team in Iran? I mean, do you just pick the club team that your dad is a fan of? Um, to be honest, I don't know many. Uh, my dad was more a fan of the national team. I, I haven't watched the Iranian league enough to really understand. I'm not a person, my dad's a Milan fan, so I'm not a person to really, you know, he would never force a team onto me or try to make me support a team. So it would be through my own research and my own watching of the Iranian league to, to get to know the teams better and find a team that I like, I think. You know, when talking about your dad, um, so do you have any, do, do you have a decent amount of vocabulary, of, uh, do you have a decent amount of Farsi vocabulary that you know, or is it just very minimal? Very, very minimal, almost zero. I wish, my dad uh, never, never forced me to learn it. My mom wanted me to learn it, actually, more than my dad did. My mom wanted me to learn the language. Uh, one day I will, for sure, probably soon, because I'm, I really like, I would like to learn the language, but it's, it's tough, and, you know, when you're busy, it's kind of hard to learn a language, you know, I go through uh, school right now as well, but no, I, the most I've ever heard him is him talking on the phone, really, so I haven't picked up that much. Sure, here I'm talking on the phone, or maybe getting upset at the TV when, uh, when Team Ellie is playing the national team. Yeah, something like that, maybe, yeah. All right, yeah, definitely makes sense. Um, and so basically, so you would say that, would you say that your first uh, your first memory of watching the national team of Iran was during the 2006 World Cup, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, I actually have a 2006, their jersey, their Puma jersey. That was the first time I would have watched. Obviously, at six years old, it's kind of hard to remember, remember names or teams. But yeah, that would have been the first time I watched them play. And, you know, I want to, you know, switch gears a little bit, you know, obviously talking about your career still. You played for Canada in the 2017 uh, CONCACAF championship at the U17 level. You know, tell, tell me about that experience and how did it help you as a player? So, yeah, the CONCACAF tournament is a qualifying tournament for the, the U17 World Cup. So we kind of do an inter intercontinent qualifying and... For Canada, they actually do really well. So in the, let's say, year leading up to the CONCACAF tournament, we'll travel to the Caribbean countries, the Central American countries that will, and we kind of play tournament games or just friendly games against Jamaica or Panama or Costa Rica. But yeah, the experience in the tournament was actually fantastic, just in terms of, at that point, I'd never been exposed to real professional 
you know, professional tournaments, professional leagues. That would have been the first time where it was really like, you know, there's cameras everywhere. There's people in the stands. There's security. There's, you know, stuff like that that you don't really see at the youth level. So, yeah, it's a, probably opened my eyes more to how the professional game really is run because there's a lot of things behind the scenes, you know, also on the field, tactical. Obviously, national team football is different than club football. You can see that in the difference between the World Cup and the Champions League. So from that standpoint, you see that, yeah, tactics are different. You know, uh, the way the group stages are run, you know, there's, there's certain games where maybe it's the last 10 minutes and you're tied. Do you go for the win or do you try to settle for a point? You know, things like this are a lot of different things that you wouldn't learn in club football or at youth football and that I learned at at that tournament. Well, that must have been quite an experience. And, you know, I'm sure just that feeling of playing for, you know, playing for your country. I mean, that, that, must, that must have been some kind of, you know, feeling that, that's hard to describe. Am I right? Yeah, I think it's the same for everyone, you know, uh, playing for the country you were born in or one of your nationalities is a big, big honor. And yeah, there's really no, no words to explain how you feel like, you know, when you're on the field, it's just, raw passion at that point you know the interesting the excuse me, the interesting thing about you and of course other players who have who, who come who have parents that are born in different countries or of different ethnicities so i mean technically you'd be eligible to play you know not of course you know besides canada uh, you'd, you'd be eligible to play for iran and even uh, italy um so now my question is this now i now i have to throw this question at you is what would it be like if Italy is playing Iran one day in the World Cup? Would that be a form of torture for you? If Italy were playing Iran and I was a spectator, first of all, I want to be in the stadium, wherever that is. I'd love to watch it live. But no, you know, it's it's one of those games. If it was a knockout game, yeah, maybe a little worse. If it was a group stage game, okay. But it would just be, you know, you just I would watch it as a neutral, probably as a fan, you know, either way that it goes. Um one of my parents is probably going to be happier at the end of it all, but it is what it is. It's football. Sometimes games like that happen, you know? Yeah, of course. I mean, I could I could also even ask the same question, you know, what's it like when Canada plays again, you know, Canada plays Italy or Canada plays Iran? I mean, I'm sure, yeah, there's, there's all these different scenarios. Uh, but, you know, going back to the 2018 World Cup, you know, uh, you know, earlier you mentioned how Iran had a good team, and yes, they did. I mean, getting a tie against, excuse me, getting a win against Morocco, the close loss to Spain, the tie against Portugal, you know, they came so close to beating Portugal at the very end. You know, Mehdi Etarami misses that shot. I mean, so close to sending Iran to the second round. I mean, was your dad pretty heartbroken after that game? And, you know, were you there to, you know, show him some support? Yeah, so for the 2018 World Cup, I was actually – in I would have been in Bulgaria I think but I have a video of my dad actually going crazy at the TV but anyway back to what you were saying uh yeah the national team at that point was coached by uh, I think it was Carlos Queros was the coach yeah. yeah he was the coach who had assembled a fantastic team you know like these are some top top players you know coming together and you could see you could also see four years before they played Argentina I think, yeah, 2014 when Messi scored in the last minute. Another one of these, you know. So I think the national team is so close. I mean, they also have a great youth national team. They have some fantastic players at the U21 level. I think I watched about two years ago. So I think the national team there is in a great spot. I mean, judging by that tournament, they were literally inches away from pulling off some miraculous win against Portugal. You know, these are biggest teams in the entire world with like top 10 players and they're coming within minutes or seconds even or inches from getting points off of them. So obviously you have to be a good team. You know, Alessandro, I just really like to thank you for taking the time to be a guest on Team LA Talk. It really has been a pleasure to have you. And before I let you go, I think this is a question that you knew was coming. You know, if the situation presents itself in the future, I mean, how would it feel to be called up to play for the national team of Iran? Oh, it'd be one of the greatest honors. You know how big of a fan my dad is. And my dad was really, along with my mom, but my dad was the biggest influence on 
on me playing football. So I know if I played uh, for the, if I ever even got the chance to represent Iran, I mean, it would just make him as proud as he could ever be, and which would fill my whole career pretty much. Alessandro, thank you for taking the time to, to be on Team LA Talk. It really was a pleasure to have you on the show. It's great to talk to you, and, and I just want you to know that I'm, um, you know, just want to wish you the best of luck in your career as a footballer, and I'll be making sure to keep, uh, to pay attention to all games from Pacific FC. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Thanks for having me on. It was, it was good fun. All right. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the interview. Thank you again to Alessandro Hojabarpur for taking the time to be on Team Melly Talk. Really do appreciate it. In the meantime, you all know what to do. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that notification button. See you next time on Team Melly Talk.